All right, welcome to The Lowdown, brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sarney, and joining me today is the Queensbury gaffer, the main man himself, Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Frank Warren. How are you, Frank? I'm fine, Dev. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, look, there's, there's a lot going on in the boxing world. I think we are overdue a catch-up. Um, there's fights that happened over the weekend. There's fights coming up. But everyone on Twitter is just asking me the same thing which is mainly about where my Christmas bonus stands. So, what, so where are we with that? Not had it yet. Not come through yet, no. So, but I assume... Yeah. It must be in, it's in the post, mate. It's in the post. I'll, ch- I'll check, I'll check. I'll be keeping an eye out for that. Um, but in serious matters, I assume that's, that's going to happen anyway. I was serious. Um, I was serious. I'll carry on. <laughs> um, since we last spoke, the, the whole heavyweight situation has evolved somewhat when we last spoke we were talking about a potential step aside for Anthony Joshua and then the the big fight happening Fury against Usyk since that Dillian White has been ordered as the mandatory and a uh, a negotiation period has been ordered what can you tell us about this situation of Dillian White Tyson Fury Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk how does it all sit it sits as you just said at the moment um, of course, everybody wants to see the fight between um, Tyson and Usyk, but to make that happen, two fighters now would have to step aside, AJ and uh, White. Um, the negotiations have been tentatively going on at the moment with Dillian White. However, until, and I'm quite sure we get it soon, until they determine the WB, see what the uh, splits would be should it go to purse bits. And once we get that, then we then I think the, the, the negotiations will, will sort of move start moving very quickly then. So you're not the only person saying that in the market. Eddie Hearn's saying the same thing. It's difficult to negotiate when you don't know what the split is. What, why hasn't no, that happened? Agree. I don't know, but I'm sure it will happen uh, fairly soon. Have you got confidence that you will get a deal done or do you think it would go to person? Well, what, what do you think? I, I, I like to think we'll get a deal done. I mean, you know, we'll be we'll be De- you know, dealing direct with um, with uh, Dylan and see where we go from there. What, where are we thinking location-wise? There was rumours of... It's a, it's Cardiff. a British fight. It's a British fight. And uh, depending on what time of the year it's to go on, if it goes on in winter, you know, leading up to, you know, or up to March, the only sizable venue that's got a roof that's, that, that can put it on to deal with the British weather would be Cardiff. Other than that, it'd have to go into, a, into a, an arena. Um, you know, in an ideal world, I'd like to put it on at Man, at Man United because that's where Tyson comes from. But one, it's the football season. And two, the weather in March is not the greatest weather. Mm. Well, listen, do, do you, it would be. Do you see any scenario in which that's not the next fight for both guys? It, if the two, if the two, uh, the, 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 the two guys who want to fight the champions step aside, then it could happen. How far did talks actually progress with, with Anthony Joshua before? Because it seemed to come as a bit of a surprise where suddenly Dillian White well, was ordered as no, the mandatory. Well, I mean, you know, the, 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 the talks that were going on um, were, there, there was a will to do it with everybody, but it, it is what it is now. And it's all irrelevant anyway. That's totally irrelevant. We're in the situation we're in now, and that's what we had to deal with. Tyson's been out, you know, before that fight, was out of the ring for 20 months. He, he, want to be, he wants to get out. He wants to be active. He's told everybody he wants to be out in latest March. So that's what we're working towards. He came face-to-face with Alexander Usyk um, over the weekend as well. Did you catch he that? Did. He did, yeah. I knew they were going to, I knew they, he was going to be, be up there for um, Bob's birthday, which was good. What did you think? How do you York. think they sized up? It's, it is what it is. I mean, that, that, that's, that's just a bit of fun and so forth at the thing. You know, all I know is for as far as, you know, on a night of a fight, you know that Tyson is, Tyson is in every every way a much bigger man physically than uh, the Usyk. Usyk's a really good fighter, but I just I think Tyson's a good fighter, obviously, too. And I just think that they're similar in their styles, but I think Tyson, his size will be the, the deciding factor in that fight, no doubt about it in my mind. He would do what Anthony Joshua didn't do. He won't be backing off of him. Do you expect him to impose his size, impose his, his, his strength yeah, on him? Yeah, of course. Well, that's, he's just sent, that's what he is, Tyson. He's, a, he's, he's not a four, is he? I mean, he's, he knows boxing better than you and I. 
And that's what he would do. You, you impose your physical attributes against your opponent. His physical attribute, attributes are he's got a really good chin, he's got a good defence, he's got a great jab, and he's got a better reach than Usyk. He's a bigger man, he's a bigger punch than Usyk. So, you know, he'll it, it, use all that to his advantage. And that means he's not going to be backing off of him. He'll be taking the centre of the ring and backing him up. What about Dillian White, Ben? Well, I mean, obviously, he presents a challenge as well. You know, what, what, what do you think Tyson needs to be wary of against Dillian White? Well, he mustn't be complacent. I, you know, he's not that type of guy anyway, but he mustn't be complacent. And if he's not complacent, in my opinion, he'll, he'll stop him. I just feel that Tyson is, is, is too much, too, you know, he's too more rounded, grounded, and I think too smart for him. Well, let's talk about the welterweights briefly. We've just seen over the, the weekend, Conor Ben register a, a KO win, an impressive KO win over Chris Algieri. What did you make of it? I, I assume you watched it. You watched it, all the boxing, didn't you? Yeah, he did well. He did what he had to do. Went out and stopped him and uh, he got that fight out of the way. And if I remember rightly, Matram or Hearn said that uh, he wanted one more fight, Conor, and he needed to take on Am and David. So let's get it on. Do you expect that to happen? I, I bet the phone's ringing off the hook, right? Oh, they, they, they rang me immediately after the fight. Um, that I won't be waiting for. That's for, I won't be holding my breath for it, that's for sure. Um, no, they won't, they, they, they won't want that. They said they wanted it. They said he'd, he'd have one more fight, but they won't want that. It'd be a great fight, by the way, the two of them. Both punchers. be an exciting fight. You know, and, and from my, my perspective, I have no problem with that fight going ahead. And I think what, what may be a way to do it if they're up for it, is just get two envelopes, one from Matram, one from us. We'll put our, put our bids in. Whoever wins it, it goes on Matram or it goes on Queensbury, if they're up for it. If they're up for it. I was watching an interview with Neil Marsh, uh, and he said, obviously, that, that envelope idea is great. Um, but he said you, you would be happy to let David Avenition go over there if, that, if that's what it took uh, for the Conor Ben fight to happen. I've just said, you know, I've got no problem with a fight. I have no problem with a fight. I, I, you know, I won't be, I'm, I, you know, my, I'm not in a pissing contest. I, only, I think, do think these things through, and it's only if I fancy my man can win the fight. I do think he can. Mm. Well, what is the situation with David Avenison? Because away from that, obviously, you know, there's talk of that fight. People do want to see Conor Ben tested against a, a real, you know, he's, he's a heavy-handed Russian who'll come to win. Um, yeah. But away from that, What's the situation? Because I understand he was actually ordered to fight Virgil Ortiz. That's correct. And Ortiz was apparently going to fight in January or sometime. I don't know if that's still going ahead. And, we, we, you know, again, we have no problem with that fight. Let's see what happens. I don't think Ortiz will take it, but we'll see. And if he doesn't, then it, it moves him into, into a position where he'll fight for the title soon. So there's a scenario there where if, if Ortiz doesn't take it for whatever reason, wants to go another route, there's a scenario where David Avenition could end up being well in line for a shot at Errol Spence. Yeah, it's a tough fight, but a bloody good fight. Tough fight, but a good fight. How do you rate his chances in that? Errol Spence hasn't been the, the most active. There's still a few sort of question marks as to how he's recovered. Well, that's true. All you say is true, but but that, I certainly would not underestimate him. He's a very good fighter. But then again, David is very power, very strong and very powerful, and he's mature. So it's not like a young kid going in there. He knows what he's got to do. Um, and if he gets the opportunity, he's the type of fighter who will take that opportunity literally with both hands. So I think it's a good fight. Mm. So with regard to the Virgil Ortiz situation, what happens next then? It's all gone a bit quiet since that initial statement from the WBC. Well, let's see what happens after that. You know. Um, Next year we'll be pushing, you know, be pushing really hard to to, to get David's um, get David that fight, or if not that fight, then they, we need to, we need to move to the next level. Mm. What about Echo Essman, our, our British and Commonwealth unbeaten welterweight champion? There's there's been a lot of talk about how you know Conor Ben is obviously saying he's the best in Britain, um, but you know he hasn't fought Echo Essman, who's got the British title. Where, where does he fit into the mix? Well, again, that'd be, a, that'd be a good fight to make. I haven't got a problem with that fight with Conor Ben. They fancy that either. either. I haven't got a fight with that. It's not the end of the world. Whoever loses the fight. It, 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 but they're good fights. They're good fights to make at the moment. Mm, 100%. And uh, Joe Smith, 
that's the next sort of Queensbury involvement in a show, Joe Smith against yeah. Callum Johnson. How did that fight come about, Frank? I've been talking to Bob about it and I've been pushing for the fight. And the fact that um, there was the rematch between um, Anthony Yard and Lyndon Arthur, um, it gave him the opportunity to, or gave him the opportunity to, to be able to jump in and, I, and um, Bob and I made the fight. And uh, hopefully now Anthony will be in, a posi- be in a position to fight the winner. I mean, that, that fight is a, an absolute shootout, isn't it? It will be. It won't go long, but, but they both come to fight. You know that. They're both good bangers and they come to fight. So it's going to be interesting why it lasts. Were you expecting them to take this fight for Joe Smith? Yeah. We worked hard to, to make it happen. We worked hard to make it happen. So it's on. And we delivered for our man. And in terms of Anthony Yard, then, is it like a, a is it a guaranteed shot or is it just a sort of a, an agreement that you've got with Bob or how does it work? Well, we've got an agreement. Let's see what happens with the rank, new rankings when they come out. He beat them with number one in Lyndon Arthur, so be there. And the mandatory will be ordered, for, no doubt about that, for, um, for um, the winner of Joe Smith and uh, Cal. And if Callum wins, and I think he can win, he's got a great shot there. It won't be difficult to make the fight in the UK. What a fight that would be. Yeah, be a, be a monster. Great fight for 2022, that would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another great fight for 2022, in my opinion anyway, is a, is a rematch between Hamza Shiraz and, and Bradley Skeet. There's been a, a lot of chat on social media. Bradley Skeet's very feels very aggrieved with what happened. There's been statements going out from the board. Hamza Shiraz has made a classy statement um, and he's offered the rematch. Where are we with all of this? Well, he's, he's offered to participate in the rematch and we've written to Dominic Ingle and indeed to Bradley and offer them the opportunity. We've given them two deadlines. One was, I think, last Friday and I think another one um, today and we're just waiting for him to come back. But, you know, you can only offer so much and if it... If he feels aggrieved, and I understand where he's coming from when he says that, you know, he, 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 he felt that um, he was hit on the floor, albeit he did get up, albeit that the referee did take a point off Hamza. All those things happened. Having said that, if he, if he wants to get back in and prove he was a better man and, it, and he would have won the fight, had it not been for that, then let's get a rematch on. It's really simple. We've got a date for it, February the 12th. Hamza's ready to go. Brad wants it. Do it. If not, then zip your mouth up and move on, do what you've got to do and let Hamza get on and do what he's got to do. Well, it hasn't been called a no contest. Um, it hasn't been ruled a... Why should it? No, he, he wasn't disqualified on the night. He had a point to He penalised on the night. You know, they don't alter the results of football matches. If a referee gets something, they feel a referee gets it wrong, but I don't think the referee did because he, I, I could hear what the referee was saying to him. Where I was sitting, he said to him, talking to him, what do you want to do? And he said, you want to get up? And in the cor- up far corner was his trainer, Dominic, saying, stay down, getting disqualified. That's what was going on. But he got up. And as he got up, the referee gave him time to, uh, to recover and took it, then took a point off of Hamza and then carried on. So what do, you, what do you think this situation is currently playing out then in terms of, uh, I see a lot from Bradley uh, and his, his fans and followers and friends on social media right now, really uh, just, you know, complaining about what happened, but the board have made the ruling Look, that. What's happened's happened. You can't change it. All the control have done what they've done. Referee did what he did. That's where we are. Some days, you, you, some days with referees, you're happy with their decisions. Sometimes, you know, I wasn't happy that, I think it was Steve gave the draw with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder in the first fight. I thought Tyson won it by a few rounds, but I can't change what he scored it on the night. That's boxing. Things happen. But you know how you put it right? Do what Tyson and Deontay did. And the rematch. We had two rematches, but they, they had two fights. Bradley, you want to put it right? Put it right in the ring. You, you know, you've had your offer. It's good money. Do the fight. Or not. Or if you don't want it, that's your prerogative, your choice. But if you don't want it, then you've got to just stop with all the, with all the complaints and moaning. You, the opportunity to put it right is in your hands. Get in the ring and put it right if you feel you've got the beast in hands of Shiraz, if you feel you've got the beast of it. A lot of people think you have. You was in front. No, you was in front in that fight. I'm not saying you weren't in front and so forth. Um, 
my opinion, do I think? I think he was closing you down a bit. He, I mean, he did knock you down. I know he hit you when you was down, but he did knock you down. He's had a good offer. At the end of the day, it's his choice. You either want it or you don't want it. And let's get on with it. I'll let's tell you what I do with the fight. I'll tell you what they do. Make the rematch, and me, I'll have a 20 grand side bet. I'm back in Hamza. Okay, look. The, the gauntlet is there. The offer's there. The, the offer link the gauntlet. Is if you want the fight, if you want the fight, I mean, I don't want to be, I mean, I promoted Brad. I like Brad. He's been with me for a long time. But if you want to put it right, put it right. If you don't want to put it right, then let's move on. Okay, well, let's, let's hope that we hear back from uh, Team Skeet soon because it's a fight that we all want to see again. Um, yeah. Frank, I noticed a couple of new deals recently. Mark Chamberlain, Sam Noakes. Are you, you're building something there, aren't you? Well, they, we've done well with them. I mean, their contracts now, they uh, didn't have long to run on their contracts and they're very happy with what we've done with them and how we've guided their careers as promoters. So, uh, you know, they've, they, they've, they've come in and done new deals with us and we move on and on to the next stage of their careers. I mean, they're, they're still guys, got a long way to go. I think it's, what is it, nine, nine fights apiece they've had. So they've got a way to go yet. I mean, they're still still youngsters and still got a... Uh, got, uh, a lot of experience to get, but I like what I see with them, and that's why we've extended the agreements, and that's why they stayed with us because they know we're capable of delivering for them. In that division that they're both in, the lightweight division, you say they've they've obviously yeah they've got a long way to go. They're eight and oh, nine and oh. But that division domestically seems wide open. They're, I don't know who the British champion is. I'm 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 not do, do you? I mean I I don't know. There's no obvious sort of name. It feels like they can get there pretty quickly. Well, the bottom line is they can both get there and do that. But what I'm looking to do is like we do with all our fighters when we're in this position is to build and build and build and build those two guys into a big fight. So maybe, you know, 14, 18 months time, that could be a huge fight against two exceptional talents. Before I let you go, Frank, I ain't got too much more to talk to you about, but I want to know five fights you want to see in 2022 what you got for me right let's go um tyson Usyk. i'd love to see the, that yeah wouldn't we all Anthony yard and mr buatsi okay okay yeah i mean that look buatsi was there he was there the other night well there you go um david and connor Avenition against Ben, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Maybe in 18 months' time. They're both in number one spots in two different organisations. I'm sure one of them, they're going to want to fight for titles. I'd love to see the rematch with um, Joe Joyce and Daniel down the road. I think it's a big, big fight down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and what's the other one? My brain's going. You've gone throw a couple at me. I'm old. You know, I I well, no, but I'll tell you someone who's in a, in a great spot. Zach Parker. Oh, Zach Parker. Yeah, Zach Parker. I was just going to say, set it together. Zach Parker. I want to see him in a world title fight. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, there's... there's Andrade. They, they, they say Andrade's coming up. Maybe that. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you, what, what do you think about that? Andrade can't seem to get his big key fight at middleweight. And if he moves up to 168, he becomes installed as the mandatory as per the WBO's rules. Well, I think, I think it'd be interesting to see what, what happens with that. But you know what? He's number one, uh, man, and uh, maybe they should, those two should get it on. We'll see. Let's see what happens. But they're good fights. Very good Quality fights. Fight. Very good fights. Um, okay, Frank, any, uh, anything you want to add? Any any little teasers? Any fights coming up? Any Anything you yes, can tell we've me? Got a press, we've got a press conference on next Wednesday, and okay. uh, you'll be there. You'll be hosting it. You and uh, that'll be for our show to take place on February the 12th, and it will feature Joe Joyce. Okay. All right. Cool. Little snippet. Hamza Shiraz will be on the card. And hopefully in the other corner will be Bradley if he wants to do it again. All right. I can already see Michael Benson tweeting this out. So, uh, yeah, look, fantastic stuff, Frank. Um, yeah, just Merry Christmas, and I guess I'll see you next week. We will. We'll, we'll wish everybody Merry Christmas uh, again next week. And uh, I hope everybody, um, we thank everybody for supporting us 
we've had a good year. That's you know, we've got fans back in after the COVID. It's been great. And so that continues to be the case. And next year, 2022, we've got some seriously good fights coming up involving some seriously good fighters and some seriously good young talent. Looking forward to it. Just before I let you go, just a final one. Um, Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora rematch this weekend. You worked with Derek Chisora for the majority of his career. He's still going. Um, How do you see that fight going? Look, I, I, I was reading something yesterday about he keeps keeps um, photobombing weddings or something going into weddings. Yeah, him and Bellew rocked up at some wedding. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, you know, look, I just hope he's not going to be a bridesmaid again. The one for me, I'd like to see if he comes through, Joe, if, 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 and I like um, Parker, if he comes through, good fight there with him and Joe Joyce. 100%. That could be one to make in 2022, huh? Yeah. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Brilliant, Frank. Thanks for joining me today on The Lowdown, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. All the best.